Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about the play A Woman of No Importance written by Oscar Wilde. Now before we go into the summary and analysis of this play, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can reach more people. Now, this play is very interesting because I believe that even though that it was written um, in the Victorian era, it still said a lot about um, our lives in the 21st century. If you're living in a developed country, um, you know that a, a lot of um, individuals have broken homes. A lot of um, family units are broken um, and um, a lot of mothers have to raise their children uh, by themselves. So a woman of no importance um, in, in many ways, it's pretty much about a mother, a single mother, raising a child um, on her own. Um, in the beginning of the play, we are introduced uh, to the creme de la creme of um, English society in the Victorian era. And these rich people, they, they don't have nine to five jobs. They're not working. Um, they're all from old money. Um, and we're, we're introduced to them at this social function at this, this, it's kind of like a party and at this function, they're socializing with each other. They're having conversations here and there. They talk about politics. They talk about Americans and the way they dress. They talk about English politics, um, and all the types of gossip that, that rich people do because they don't have jobs. So after we're introduced to this social life, this social function, uh, we're also introduced to um, Lord Illingworth. Lord Illingworth is this individual. He's very cocky. He does what he wants, um, when he wants. Um, and even in the beginning of the play, he even um, says to himself that um, he is going to kiss um, this girl by the name of Hester uh, because, you know, he, he just believes that he can, even though that he is old enough to be Hester's uh, father. Um, so the novel goes on, and uh, Lord Illingworth offers Gerald um, a job. Uh, Lord Illingworth wants um, Gerald to be his secretary. Uh, Lord Illingworth says that he has something in the works, and that he believes that um, you know Gerald could be a good fit um, to helping him build what he wants to build. For me, I um, I thought that uh, when I was reading the the play, um, I, I thought this was a little bit sketchy because. Um, if you're going to hire me for a job, you got to tell me exactly what that job is. You can't just tell me uh, you're going to hire me. You have something in the works uh, and you're going to do that job. So th th that's left there and the play continues. Uh, so Gerald goes around. He tells everybody. He says, I have a great opportunity here. Uh, I can make a name for myself by working for Lord Illingworth. Um, I can start making some money and start, to, um, um, you know, that upward mobility, he's, he's thinking about that. And so he's very happy, so he tells his mother, uh, Gerald goes and tells his mother, he says, you know, uh, I'm getting the, the secretary job with um, Lord Illingworth, and I'm very happy about it. And uh, Mrs. Arbuthnet is not happy, she's not happy at all, and she tells Gerald, you shouldn't go, I don't want you to go. Um, and, and they're not happy with each other, and they're pretty much angry. Um, and Gerald is kind of mad and, and he doesn't know why his mom is acting like this. He doesn't understand why his mom is not letting him uh, pursue his dreams of, of becoming wealthy, of becoming successful, of, of starting in the working world. Um, and so the play goes on and we do learn the reason why all of this is happening is that uh, Mrs. Arbuthnet uh, was in love when she was um, younger um, and... Um, Lord Illingworth is the individual that she was in love with, and Lord Illingworth is um, Gerald's father. Um, so um, when she was younger and she was in love with um, Lord um, Illingworth, uh, they uh, she got pregnant, and Lord Illingworth uh, abandoned her, um, and she had to raise Gerald all by herself. So when uh, Lord Illingworth came into the picture after Gerald um, had grown up and, you know, he's a grown man um, and he's finally starting to be independent, um, he's trying to be his own individual, that's when Lord Illingworth finally shows up and in, in, in some way wants to be a part of um, Gerald's life. Um, 
So Lord Illingworth learns about Jareth and that Jareth is his son, uh, but it's kind of too late because um, Gerald is surprised about this um, when the truth is revealed, uh, and, and Lord Illingworth is surprised about this, um, and you know it really um, separates the two. Um, Gerald was at first he was really happy to be acquainted and uh, with Lord Illingworth, uh, but when he realizes that's his father and how his father had abandoned him and his mother, uh, Gerald didn't feel that way anymore. Um, and really what really um, made matters worse is that um, Lord Illingworth tries to complete his bet. He didn't know that, in fact, Hester was um, uh, someone that Gerald actually liked, someone that um, Gerald, in a way, wants to build a future with. And um, he tries to kiss her. Um, Lord Illingworth tries to kiss Hester, uh, and she rejects him. And that even makes um, that makes Lord Illingworth look even worse in the eyes of Gerald. Um, so um, pretty much by the end of the play, uh, Mrs. Um, 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 you get Gerald, uh, um, Hester. Um, they're they're all against uh, Lord Illington. Um, Mrs. Arbuthnet is against them, and everyone's really against them. And he 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 wants to somehow build a future. Uh, with them, but there's there's no way. It's too late. Uh, he missed his opportunity, and the 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 play really ends with you know Hester and, and Gerald and Mrs. Arbuthnet, uh, um, kind of like comforting each other, or being um, um, kind of like a unit with each other, um, and and leaving Lord Illingworth out. Um, and even though he he wants to somehow fix what he did and how he abandoned Mrs. Arbuthnet, it's too late, and and that's not going to happen. Um, so if we talk about the analysis of this play, uh, from my perspective, um, there's a lot to we can take from this. Um, you know, uh, the Victorian era was not really the the time where women were independent uh, enough to take care of um, their children. Um, it wasn't certainly it wasn't expected in society. It was a big deal in society at that time, um, and so Mrs. Arbutnik, uh, Arbutnik, um she did something amazing. She um, raised her son uh, by herself, uh, and, and she lived, um, she was able to um, provide him and build a good life for her son, um, even though that uh, Lord um, Illingworth was not there. Um, so it says a lot about um, how tough um, single parents can be, um, especially mothers, how tough they can be and how resilient they can be. Um, and even though that uh, Lord Illingworth didn't find Mrs. Arbuthnet to be important enough to stick around, uh, even though that uh, Lord Illingworth didn't believe that um, Mrs. Arbuthnet was important, um, Gerald believed that uh, his mother was important, um, and she had a lot of support uh, from other individuals who knew about her story, and who knew um, you know, the struggles that she had to go through to raise um, her son by herself. Uh, and so... Uh, even though that the the title uh, of this play it tells us a woman of no importance, um, in fact we can see that Mrs. Arbuthnet is an individual that has a lot of importance. Um, to Lord Illingworth, she doesn't have importance, but again to other people she did. Um, so you can see how uh, the title has a place within the story and how uh, it, it defines some of the characters within the story, um, and um, you know how it impacts uh, the way in which um, different groups of people thought about each other within the Victorian era. Lord Illingworth believed that as a man, as an individual of power, of wealth, he could do whatever he wants when he wants, um, you know, be with what type of women, any women that he wants without any repercussions. Uh, and even though that Hester was, you know, that even though that Hester could have been his daughter, he didn't really care because that's how he that's how he saw himself. He saw himself um, as an individual um, who who's just um, um, he's, he's just not going to fail. He didn't see himself as ever failing, and that's really what um, happens in the play. That's really what um, a woman of importance um, is all about, um, um, and that's pretty much it. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or.
comment, and I will see you guys in the next video.